Gracious loving Father of mercy and compassion, be with us in this presentation and give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to welcome you all in a very special way, brothers and sisters. May the Lord truly bless you. Thank you for joining us. And today we are looking at the policy of the beast. We are primarily focusing primarily on the climate change. But we'll also talk about the tidings from the east which will defeat the beast. Brothers and sisters, as we have covered before, you know for sure that uh, the book of Revelation chapter 13 is being fulfilled as we are talking. The whole world is now wandering after the beast. The sustainable development goals have been impressed all, embraced almost all over the world. And the whole world is racing toward the 2030 agenda. As the world is racing toward the 2030 agenda, the countries have made pledges to reach the net zero by 2035, by, 20, by 2050. So there is a lot of scramble, there is a lot of hard working to ensure that the whole world has reached this net zero. But remember, this policy is from the beast. The climate change is from the beast. And now look at what is happening there in London, primarily. This was the Express uh, newspaper. This was uh, the 4th of July, 2023. It says, Euless slammed as money-making scam. It calls for to delay London expansion. Now, let's actually read it. It says, London's ultra-low emission zone is due to be expanded from, their inner, from the inner city to encompass all boroughs on August 29, but the move is not welcome by the express readers, with 96% calling it to be delayed. The change means that motorists drive non-compliant vehicles in the capital, including diesel vehicle registered before 2016 and petrol vehicle registered before January 2006, will be subject to a daily charge of £12.50. Uh, brothers and sisters, this is not a joke. I lived uh, in the outer London. It's very far away from London. You drive 11 miles to get into London. So from that area all the way to central London, you, they will be paying £12.50. Everyone with a diesel car which, is, uh, which was registered before 2016 and all with petrol cars registered before 2006. What actually that means is many people are going to sacrifice to buy new cars, number one. Number two, many people will get rid of their cars and they will use public transport and they will be delayed to get to their workplaces. They will fail to do the duties that they are doing. And now, what exactly is the reason behind? Look at the words of the mayor. Mr. Kane explained at LBC State of London debate on Tuesday. Clean air should not be a privilege for those who live in central London. It should be a human right for everyone in London. I wish I could believe him because what he's doing, it's not accepted by many. Now listen to the argument of Nigel Farage giving us the actual reason why they are doing this. It's a money-making scam, number one. But also, this is an agenda for the World Economic Forum of the creation of the smart city. Just take a look. So here's the background. The background, of course, is all about climate change, climate change and pollution added onto that. Over the course of the last few years, uh, Mayor Sadiq Khan of London has made most of central London 20 mile per hour speed limits. I'm not joking, it's 20 mph, even on dual roads in most of London. Speed cameras are being installed every single day of the week and even at two o'clock in the morning. If you're doing 23 miles per hour, you will get flashed, you will get penalty points and a fine. Then they introduce low traffic neighborhoods, which means they literally block off some roads and make them pedestrian. All of which means the traffic gets worse, congestion gets worse, and hey, guess what? Pollution goes up. But that doesn't stop them. Then they've got the concept here of what's called a 15-minute city. That if you drive more than 15 minutes from your home, you'll have to start paying tolls and charges to do so. So all of this has been going on as, by the way, they build cycle lanes. They turn dual roads into one-lane roads with a cycle lane on the side, which for 20 hours a day is used by virtually nobody. And then this Tuesday, Mayor Khan says, 
the air quality in London today is going to be poor. And that's because summer has finally arrived on our little island. All right. So he says, please don't use your car unless it's absolutely necessary. Do not let your car idle. Do not burn wood and so on and so forth. Now, if I'd said to you four years ago that we'd be locked down because of a flu-like virus that had come from China, you would not on this program have believed me. And I'm telling you here and now that in the name of climate change, in the name of pollution, we will, certainly in London, within the next few years, have a period when the mayor says, you must not use your car at all, and air quality is so bad, you must stay at home. Mm -hmm. But if you do have to go to work, please use the subway. And by the way, the air quality on the subway is so bad, some days it's dangerous. This isn't about pollution. Nope. It isn't about climate change. It's about controlling our lives. We're becoming like China. And don't think it won't come to you, because it will. As you've seen, brothers and sisters, the call is that these policies may be delayed. They are not calling for the scrapping of this policy, as we can see from the Liberal Democrat MP. They are calling for the delay of this uh, policy. But now, why should this policy be delayed? It is simply because these policies are going to go through. Because these policies are going to go through, they are saying that maybe the world is not yet ready to, or the London is not yet ready to accept these policies. But now let's move from London. Let's go to Canada. Look at uh, this uh, paper. This was Life Site. Albertus Daniela Smith tells Trudy his 2035 net zero policies aren't possible. So Daniela is saying this policy, we like it. But it's not possible in that short space of time. And then she, Alberta's Premier Daniela Smith gave Prime Minister Justin Trudeau a swift rebuke regarding his move, his government's climate change targets, telling him to his face that it won't be possible for her province to reach his net zero emissions aims by 2035. Why is it not possible? Because people depend on oil. Because People depend on coal. And if you are going to close this policy, you make life very, if you are going to stop this production, you make life very difficult for the people. The speed is too much. Oh, remember, they are not saying that the policy is bad. They are just saying your speed is just too much. You need to slow down. Now the question is, why can they not just scrap the policies altogether? It is simply because the governments have subscribed to the Millennium Development Goals first, and they subscribe to the Sustainable Development Goals, and they have subscribed to the World Economic Forums, and these are the agenda, the agenda of the climate change being pushed by Vatican itself. Now look at what it says here. The true government's current environmental goals, which are in lockstep with the United Nations Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development Goal, including phasing out coal-fired power plants. How are they going to manage in Canada if they do that? Reduce fertilizer usage. What, what will happen to the production of food and keeping natural gas use over the coming decades? The reduction and eventual elimination of so-called fossil fuel and transition to unrenewable green energy has also been pushed by the World Economic Forum, the globalist group behind the socialist great reset agenda of which Trudy and some of his cabinet are involved. So the members of the World Economic Forum, they will not stop to push these policies. They can just delay it. But there's something very interesting that I want you to understand, brothers and sisters. This delay is happening all over. And people are realizing that we don't need this speed. Now, what's happening in England is very interesting because there is also a, there, there is a suggestion that we delay these policies. Look at what this minister is saying. Michael Gove calls to relaxation of net zero measures and warns against treating environment as a religious crusade. He's actually saying the speed is too much. We cannot achieve this net zero by 2050. The speed is too much. We cannot afford to phase out the diesel cars so quickly. The speed is too much. And this is actually not good. And in addition to that, they are saying that labor lost 
the Axbridge South Right Place seat, seat in the by-election simply because of these policies. And now they are saying we need to change these policies completely. Now uh, we need to actually delay this policy. Take a look to what they are saying now. Look at these comments. Just listen carefully to what they are saying regarding why people did not vote for Labour. The government is backing away from their unpopular green policies in a bid to win the next election. Rishi Sunak says the government's target of hitting net zero emissions by 2050 must not impose unnecessary costs. Well, we saw in Uxbridge that Ulez means you lose. So is it time for the Tories to do a net zero U-turn to help them win the general election? Alex, start with you. First of all, is it a good idea? Is it simply reactionary to a recent by-election victory? And more to the point, do you trust them as far as you can throw them? Well, there's not, there's not anything wrong with saying when the facts change, I, I change my mind. And I think um, it's good to try to be honest and, and reflective of things. I did my fair share of campaigning in Uxbridge, as I imagine James did too. I can tell you there was no huge, there, there was no huge wave of affection for my party. Mm -hmm. It was because of ULES that the Conservative Party won that by-election. And, and despite the fact the Labour candidate locally completely understandably ditched the policy, said it was wrong and yeah. tried to take a, a different stance to the stance that his um, the mayor in London, Sadiq Khan, has. So ULES showed that you can have a party, partisan advantage on these issues. And hitherto, the, the main parties have broadly been in lockstep. People yeah. have always said about the UK, it's good that, the, it, that climate change is not a debate over which there's a partisan difference. Well, here we've seen an advantage gained by my party, by there being one. And I must say that the most important thing at the next election will be how much of the red wall the Conservative Party can hang on to. So I think that there are two Two things, while still trying to remain credible, the Conservative Party, because it's been in this position for so long on, on climate change, there are two things the Conservative Party could do between now and the next election that would be rational and help it electorally. Mm. The first would be to change the restriction on um, uh, cars being banned by 2030 yeah. to match the European um, commitment. The Europeans have shifted their deadline to 2035. Why put ourselves at a uh, competitive disadvantage mm. for a relatively um, short period of time? It is beyond reasonable doubt, brothers and sisters, that the world is protesting against this. But there is something which is not good here. They are just protesting to delay it. It's not that they are objecting to it. The question is, do we really need these policies? Who exactly is behind this? So the conservatives are realizing that if they are going to push these policies, they may actually lose the election. So they would rather delay it and water it down. The question is, can they do that? Look at this paper. It says, uh, ditching green policies may not be the vote winner Sunak expects. This is the Guardian, and this was the 25th. Rishi Sunak has made a calculation this week after hanging on to Axbridge in large part because of the Tories' anti-law emission zone campaign to roll back on other green policies in the hope that it will create a dividing line with Labour at the next election. Now, why are the conservatives doing it to get the votes is it because they are against the policies no they are not but they realize that if they are going to win the votes then they need to change their strategy brothers and sisters remember this is the agenda for the beast this will be pushed through and it will go through we are told that the agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating and they are strengthening for the great crisis and the great changes are soon to take place and these final movements will be very rapid. As that is happening, brothers and sisters, remember the job of the people of God is to prepare for what is soon to come on the world because gigantic monopolies will be formed as it is happening now. And many will bind themselves together in unions that will wrap them in folds of the enemy. As that is happening, brothers and sisters, few people will combine resources. And many of us will be slaves. As we covered a few days ago, a few weeks ago rather, we noticed that you own nothing. Accommodation will be service. Appliances will be service. Cars will be service. Everything will be prepared in a way that you cannot object to the beast. You cannot object to the mark of the beast. You cannot object to the National Sunday Law.
The beast will usurp authority and she will become so powerful because she is working together with the globalists as we learn from the book of Revelation chapter 17. But the question is, can the beast be defeated? Can any power defeat the beast? Can the children of God do anything against these policies or for these policies? As we have seen in Axbridge and Ryslip, West London, they went to the ballot and they defeated Labour because of her policies, of her promotion of the low emission zone, which are the policies of the beast. They never thought that it could happen. It has happened. Now the question is, what are we doing as the children of God? What is my contribution to this? Remember, brothers and sisters, the beast is the king of the north. The king of the north will be defeated by the tidings from the east. Now the Bible says in the book of Daniel chapter 11, 44, But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make a way. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall help him. Brothers and sisters, I look forward to the day when the king of the north will be def defeated by the tidings from the east. I look forward to the day when I will be part of those who give the tidings from the east. But brothers and sisters, we are told that the message will swell into the loud cry. The message of the three angels, the three angels message will defeat the beast. The three angels message will bring the downfall of Babylon. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing which we can do as the children of God to destroy Babylon or to protest against Babylon except to bring the message of the loud cry. You know, as Jesus was parting with his disciples after his resurrection, in the book of John chapter 20, verse 21, the Bible says, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he has said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Jesus sent his disciples. He commissioned his disciples. He commissioned them with a message to destroy the stronghold of the enemy. And brothers and sisters, Matthew chapter 24, 14 makes it very clear that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world as a testimony, and then the end will come. As this gospel is being preached, the men of sin will be exposed. As this gospel is being preached, this is the gospel of protest. As this gospel is being preached, brothers and sisters, great changes will take place in the church, in the world, as the children of God will be warned for of what is coming. What is my responsibility? The book of Acts of the Apostles, page 111 says, in, uh, it says, Long has God waited for the spirit of service to take possession of the whole church so that everyone shall be working for him according to his ability. Everyone to work for God according to his ability. The singer say, we work until Jesus come everyone to work according to his ability and this is the job that will destroy the king of the north that will bring down babylon it says when the members of the church of god do their appointed work in the needy fields at home and abroad in fulfillment of the gospel commission the whole world will soon be warned and the lord jesus will return so this earth to this earth with power and great glory. So when the world has been warned, when this gospel has been preached with great power, brothers and sisters, nobody is going to preach this gospel except you and me, according to our ability. As I told from Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, that the angel fly with the everlasting gospel. This is going with speed to preach unto them that dwell on earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Politicians are to hear the word of God. Bangers are to hear the word of God. 
teachers are to hear the word of God. Everyone in the street, rich and poor, are to hear the testimony. And then they will make a decision for themselves. The message says, fear God and give glory to him. This is the only message, brothers and sisters. Fear God and give glory to him because the hour of his judgment has come. You are accountable to the God that has created you. We are told in Desire of Ages, page 633, by giving the gospel to the world, it is in our power to hasten our Lord's return. Do we want God to return? Do we want to hasten the coming of the Lord? Are we tired of this world? Therefore, brothers and sisters, there is one thing that we can do. This gospel of the kingdom will be preached unto all the world as a testimony. And it is me and you who can hasten the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are not only to look for, but to hasten the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Had the church of God, the church of Christ done her appointed work as the Lord ordained the whole world would before this been have been warned and the Lord would have come on the earth. So Jesus would have come long time ago, brothers and sisters, had the church done her appointed work. Therefore, in our generation, brothers and sisters, we are to do our part. In our generation, we are to expose the men of sin. In our generation, we are to call people to come out of Babylon. In our generation, we are to warn people to reveal to the people about the policies of the king of the north. We are to help people to understand that Babylon is fallen and she will completely fall by the declaration of the uh, National Sunday Law. And our job is to say to people, Come out of it, my people. We are told in the book of Revelation chapter 18 how this gospel will be preached. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was enlightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. He is fallen and has become the habitation of the devil and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bed. And the message, then you come out of Babylon, my people, because her sins has reached unto heaven and God has remembered her iniquities and she will be rewarded double. But now what is my job, brothers and sisters? I want to take you to the evangelism, page 233, it says, in the very time in which we live, the Lord has called his people and he has given them a message to bear. He has given them to, he has called them to expose the wickedness of the men of sin who has made the Sunday law a destructive power, who has thought to change the times and laws and to oppress the people of God who stand firmly to honor him by keeping the only true Sabbath, the Sabbath of creation, as holy unto the Lord. Brothers and sisters, we have been called to expose the men of sin. We have been called to warn the world about the policies of the devil. We have been called to deliver this truth to the world. The question that we need to ask ourselves is, who is to give this message if I don't give it? Who is to carry the Great Commission if I don't carry it? Do I have any other job, better job to do, apart from preaching the gospel, apart from living the gospel? Remember the promise of Jesus in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. The question is, have I received the Holy Spirit? If I have, where is the power? If I have power, what is my responsibility? Brothers and sisters, Great Conference, page 311 says, the work of preaching the gospel has not been committed to angels, but it has been instructed to men. Holy angels have been employed in directing this work. They have in charge the great movements of the salvation of men, but actual proclamation of the gospel is performed by the servants of Christ upon the earth. Brothers and sisters, angels are not going to preach. It's me and you. Angels are not going to bring the money. It's you and me. Angels are not going to participate except to direct the work while you and me are working. We are told that servants of God endowed with power from on high 
with their faces lightened up and shining with holy consecration, went forth to proclaim the message from heaven. Souls that were scattered all through the religious bodies answered to the call, and the precious souls were hurried out of the doomed churches as Lot was hurried out of Sodom before the destruction. This was the great awakening during the time of William Miller. And this will be repeated again, brothers and sisters, as the final call will go, verse, uh, Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. People will be hurried out of these doomed churches. But it's me and you to preach this gospel. The question is, what is my responsibility as I prepare to give a loud cry message? As I prepare to partake the call which God has given me, what am I to do as a child of God? As I prepare to protest the policies of the beast by the word of my mouth and by my life, what should I do? Brothers and sisters, we need to be victorious. We need to live a life of victory. We are told in book last day, events page 192, it is left with us to remedy the defects of our character, to cleanse the soul temple of every defilement, then the later rain will fall upon us as the early rain fell upon the disciples of the day of, on the day of Pentecost, it is left with me to ensure that I have overcome, overcome every sin, to be trained in the highest form of discipline, discipline in the way how I eat, discipline in the way how I do things. God is calling us for such brothers and sisters because it is me and you to give the third angel message. We're told that uh, in the book, uh, uh, this is Review and Herald, November 19, uh, 1908, the third angel's message is to lighten the earth with its glory, as we learn from the book of Revelation chapter 18. But only those who have withstood temptation in the strength of the mighty one will be permitted to act a part in proclaim proclaiming it when it shall swell into a loud cry. The truth is soon to triumph gloriously, and all who now choose to be laborers together with God will triumph with it. If we choose to be laborers with God, we'll triumph with this gospel. If we choose to be laborers with God, we'll triumph as this gospel triumph. Brothers and sisters, this is our time. As I was prepared this, preparing this message, a thought came to my mind. It was in England. If my memory says me right, it was in 2002. I went to this conference at Haile Conference. I was with uh, my brother Elisha Okuku. I will never forget. It was a very powerful meeting. And Elisha shared some things with me which are very, very important in the preaching of the gospel. We parted with Elisha Okuku as he was returning to Kenya. I will never forget that man. As we were parting, just before we parted in that meeting, where we were revived and strengthened for the preaching of the gospel, Elisha said, I'm now going back because of the gospel. Uh, that's the call which God has given me. We were strengthened and empowered. But later on, we attended another meeting. And in the meeting, the words of Elisha Okuku were reminded me in my ears. And a song was sang, the song which was written by Margaret Clarkson. It was a song about committing ourselves to the preaching of the gospel. And I remember my colleague, Elisha Okuku, as he was leaving, he said, it's very difficult to come to London, but it's extremely difficult to leave this world of plenty. But I have to go and do the work which God has given me. Brothers and sisters, it's very hard to commit yourself to the gospel. It's very hard to be serious in the preaching of the gospel. But when God has called us, he will enable us to do the unthinkable. So this man visited and then he talked to me and I understood something. 
So we started singing this song, which was written by Margaret. Very powerful song. And I want you to follow this song as we read it. The first stanza says, So send I you to labor and rewarded, to save and paid, and loved and sought and known, to bear rebuke, to suffer scorn and scoffing. So send I you to toil for me alone. This is a call which God has given us. So many things are happening in the world. The world is changing so quickly. But the question is, who can bring, send, who can go with this message that will bring down the beast? Who can go with this message that will hasten the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? Who can go with this message? The tidings from the east which will be very difficult for the beast to bear. Brothers and sisters, the second stanza say, So send are you to bind the bruised and broken. All wandering souls to work, to weep, to work, to bear the burdens of the world are weary. So send are you to suffer for my sake. The question is, can God count on us to finish this work? The world can do what they are doing. They are not doing anything about Jesus to, to, to uplift the name of Jesus Christ. They are not, let me actually re re rephrase that. They are not doing anything to give glory to God. The world, when I'm saying the world, I'm talking about the policies of the world, is to ensure that the message of the Lord is crushed. But remember, this is the message that will triumph. This is the message that will bring down the kingdom of the best beast. This is a message, brothers and sisters, that will hasten the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. How much can I invest in the gospel? How much time can I give to God? God is counting on me. But now look at the third and first, first stanza. So send are you to loneliness and longing, with the heart a hungering for the loved and known, forsaking home and kindred, friend and dear ones. So send are you to know my love alone. So send are you to live your life's ambition, to die to dear desire, self will reign to labor long and love when men revile you. So send are you to lose your life in mine. This was a very powerful song which was written by Margaret as she was working in that cold environment of Canada calling you and me to the mission, so sent are you. Are we going to respond to the call of God? We can see what is happening in the world. We can see how the beast is consolidating. Brothers and sisters, there is no need to withhold. All what we need to do is share the message which God has given. All what we need to do is to be honest, faithful, and truthful. Spare not, as Isaiah chapter 58 says, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering. Brothers and sisters, can God count on you? But let me go to the last stanza. Because the last stanza say, So send are you to hearts made hard by heart hatred, to eyes made blind because they see not they will not see, to spend to it, though it be blood, to spend and spare not, so send are you to test of Calvary. We are being sent to test of Calvary, to experience the pain of Calvary, to experience the sorrow of Calvary. But it is this message that will hasten the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
When we sing we are soldiers in the army, we have been sent to people who are not ready to listen to the gospel. We have been sent to people who are not prepared for the gospel. But God is counting on us. Shall we pray? Thank you, Father, for all that is happening in the world. But thank you, Jesus, that you have commissioned us. It is our prayer that we may take this work, take it with all our hearts, and share the gospel with colleagues and friends. Bless us, we beseech you. If we have not accepted you yet, to take you at your word and walk with you. Bless us, we beseech you. Bless us, O Lord, we call on you. In Jesus' name, amen. May the Lord truly bless you, brothers and sisters. I look forward to hear your comment. To be a blessing to know where you are following from. Until then, continue to be strong. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share the link. Don't forget to share the link. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.